Hey everyone, my name's Steve. I'm one of the API developers at SkySiv. And in this video, we're going to look at JSON, the data format. So that stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And it's not to be confused with say a JavaScript object, although because it's based on C languages, it looks very similar. So it's just a data interchange format and it's very readable for humans. It's very good for um, machines to process it. So this is why SkySiv have used it as a way of storing the models that you use. So any model that you open in S3D is actually stored in JSON format. And you can see this by uh, downloading the file. So I've chosen this uh, model here, which was a fun one, um, just because it's got all sorts of components in it. So you've got a meshed plate over here, a few different types of loads, members, nodes. So we can go to file and go to export. SkySiv file JSON for API. So this is what we use for our API. And then if we go over to a text editor, such as VS Code here, you could open it in any text editor. Uh, it will just format a lot more readable. So if I just run the formatter on this, it now processes it into a very readable format. So you can actually just expand and collapse all the different sections of this. So I'm just gonna collapse the entire file and you can see that it's about 1700 lines. A JSON file is totally enclosed by curly braces. Inside that, you then have keys and values. So each key uh, could have a value of just a number. It could be a string, uh, an array, such as this one here, which is denoted by square brackets, or it could be another object. So that's denoted by another set of curly braces. Inside another set of curly braces, you'll then find more keys and values. So this is why uh, beginners often get a little confused as it just looks a bit crazy. But once you see that it's just tiered data and grouped into relevant components, it starts to make a lot more sense and makes it very easy to create. So inside settings, we have, which has a value of an object. Uh, we then have another bunch of keys. So units, which is also another object. So it's just sort of nested in. And then you can see that this model uses the meters for the length, millimeters for section length and so on. You've got a few other model settings here. So vertical axis is a common one, which is in the Y direction. You can come down here. You don't need to worry about uh, the details key and the data version key. These are just things in S3D that are either old or help S3D to interpret a model. So if we expand nodes, you can see that there are 57 different nodes in this model and each node ID as a value of three more keys, an X, Y, and a Z location. If we go down to members, there'll be a few more keys in each member. So member with ID of one as these attributes. Now, because it's not a cable, if this was cable here instead of normal, then it would have a cable length as well. It goes from node A to node B of node four to node three. It has a section ID of one. So when we expand the sections, area, you'll see that there's a section in there with ID of one, and then it's got the fixity values of completely fixed at both ends. So if we come down to here, you'll see all the loads as well. They're all very similar. Um, sections can get quite deep because uh, it's got all the geometric properties in there. So you can see that goes a long way down. There are uh, simpler ways to define the section, which let's go and have a look at that. If you go to Google and go SkySiv, API docs, uh, there's a bit of a walkthrough on all, all the format of all this data and what it should look like. If we go to documentation, you can go to the S3D model and you, you can also get some samples in here too. Um, if we go down to sections, you can see that you could also just provide a section like this. So section one with this key load section and then a path, which you can read up on how to get the path here. And this will fetch all that data so you don't have to enter it manually. So let's just look at one more thing, which is more getting into the coding side of things. If you wanted to send something to the API, your model that you would create might look something like this. You might say const the model is equal to an object. And inside this object, it's going to have a settings key of another object. And then it might have units. Uh, and units might just be a string of metric, which is also an acceptable or Imperial, um, an acceptable input. When you create an API object, it might look a little something like this. You have a model with some settings, units, and all the other data that we just looked at. So you need to turn this into a string to send to the API and then back. Now, most languages have a library that will help you turn what 
that language's equivalent of an object is into a JSON string. For JavaScript, it is uh, JSON in capital letters. So we could say const model string and is equal to JSON dot stringify and pass in the model. Now this returns us this object, but as a JSON string. So if we print this out, you'll see that it's converted that object into a JSON string. Now you can tell that here because the settings has been wrapped by quotes. Uh, all the keys will be wrapped with quotes. Now let's say that the response was the same as a uh, model string. Now you'd actually get much more useful data than that, but for the sake of this demonstration, it'll work just fine. So we'll say const uh, response is equal to JSON.pass and pass in the model string. And we know that model string is a JSON string. So then we can also print that out and run that command again. And now you can see it's been passed back into an object. Now seeing this laid out like this might help you to understand what's actually going on a bit more here. It's often a point of confusion for learners that JSON is not the same as an object. Uh, it's really good to sort of understand that there, there is a, sort of an in-between step there, but these libraries are sort of just handling it for you without you maybe even knowing. One more thing to note is that if you've built uh, a JSON object, say like this, you could then save it. You could go back over to S3D and we'll just do a new one because I'm importing the same object, you wouldn't see the difference. If we go import and Dicev JSON file, and then I'll just go to my downloads where I downloaded that you'll see that it imports it again the same way. So this is a good way to actually test that your models have been built correctly because you'll get an error if there's something missing or something's been applied incorrectly. Uh, you might also find that it comes in all right looking like this, but then when you run a solve, it might fail. So run a solve on it too. And if it passes without any errors here, then you know it's a good model. So that's about it for this video. We just wanted to point out sort of the differences between a language object and the JSON format. So if you've got any questions, post them down below and we'll get back to you and sort of help you understand it a bit more.